Let me take you off of that, that mindset. Your freedom in Christ is not based on how good you've been. Amen. Your freedom in Christ is not based on how well you kept all of the law. Amen. Because we would be messed up. Your freedom in Christ is not based on the lady that you cussed out before you came here tonight. You shouldn't have did that. <laughs> but you're free. you shouldn't have did it because you're free. All right? All right? Y'all with me? You with me? All right, so it's not based on that. But it's because the Son has set me free. Somebody say, the Son has set me free. All right. This is when we start looking at the gospel from a relational standpoint versus just a religious standpoint. See, religion says I have to earn God's approval. I got to do everything that I can to get God to accept me because if he don't, then I'm going to go to hell. All right. Relationship is a whole nother story. The, let me put it this way. The work has already been done for you. The, the keeping has already been done for you. Does that make sense? And one of the best things that we can do, I think the Message Bible says it like this. It says one of the best things that you can do for God is accepting what he's done for you. And that's sometimes one of the hardest things for us to do, to simply receive the gift that God has, has given for us to receive. But stand firm in that, and don't allow yourself to be entangled in that bondage, in the yoke of bondage again, um, trying to live your life by keeping all of the rules. I'm not telling you to just live haphazardly. All right? But when we, when we believe that I'm right with God, well, I'm free because I'm doing what I want to do, or I believe that I'm right with God because I'm keeping all of the law, then I'm missing the whole point of the gospel. I'm missing the whole point of living the freedom life, grace, living the freedom life in God. All right, going down here, let's look at, um, I think y'all ready for that piece. Let's see. Go down here. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 15 through 18. We're almost done here. Verses 15 through 18. Even to this day, when Moses is read, or when the law is read, basically, all right? Even to this day, Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Y'all following that? When I read the law, my heart is covered. But when I look to Christ, the veil is removed. I look to the law, my heart is covered. My heart is downtrodden. My heart is heavy. But when I look to Christ, anything that would block it is removed. You follow that? All right. It says, now the Lord, it says, it goes on in verse 17, it says, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, what? There is freedom. There is freedom. How many of you have the spirit of God? I mean, if you, you got the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, all, <clears throat> and we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. All right? Looking at the law never liberates you. Somebody say it really loud. Looking at the law, at the law. never liberates us. Never all right? It only burdens you. All right? Now, then, how should we live? Here's our home stretch. How then should we live? Go really quick to Galatians 5 and 13. Y'all know this is probably my favorite part. My favorite part, 5 and 13. Galatians 5 and 13. Let's read that. Let's read that together. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to uh -huh. rather serve one another humbly in love. Humbly in love. Let's read it one more time. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. That's powerful beyond words, I think, to me. All right, this is showing us now. First, we started out to say that it's God's will for us to be free, right? Yes. It's God's will for us to, free, to be free. Shows us that our freedom in him depends on Christ. It depends on the grace. Basically, it depends on the grace of God that he's given to us. So then now that I'm free, now what? What am I supposed to do? Just go do what I want to do? No. He says, use not your freedom to indulge the flesh with fleshly desires. And if you keep reading in the scripture to show you what fleshly desires are, all right? But if we indulge the flesh, we're misusing the freedom that God has actually given us. Now, the world may tell you you're free. Go do whatever it is that you want to do. 
All right? Pick anything in the world that you want to do, and you just go do it because this is a free world, especially in America. You can do what you want to do, say what you want to say, be who you want to be. At least that's what they tell you, but the reality is that's not even really the truth. But um, that's not the life that God has actually called us to. So he says, use your freedom um, to serve one another humbly in love. All right? Um, look at verse 14. It says, you obey the whole law when you do this one thing. You have basically summed up everything that would be in the law when you do this one thing, this one command, keeping this one command to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus goes on to say, I give you this commandment to love the way that I have loved you. That one thing, the concept of love. I heard somebody say one time that the message of love was elementary. And in my mind, I was sitting there thinking, but you still don't have it. Well, it's elementary. But you, oh, God told me that years ago. But you mean as ever. Just as mean, just mean, you know some mean people, some people that are just mean, and then will tell you they're doing it all for your good. But anyway, uh, uh, so it says when well, you can sum up the whole law with that one, with that one verse over that one thing, and that's the love of God. Um, the verse, the in the New Life version reads that whole scripture this way. I wanted you to hear it in this way. It says, uh, Christian brothers, you were chosen to be free. Be careful that you do not please your old selves by sinning because you are free. Live this free life by loving and helping others. Somebody say loving and helping others. You obey the whole law, and when you do this, you obey the whole law when you do this one thing. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. And verse 15 says, but if you hurt and make it hard for each other, watch out. You may be destroying each other. You may be destroyed by each other. Who comes to kill, steal, and destroy? The enemy. The enemy. Don't join his camp. Y'all following that? I'm not joining his camp. I'm going to use my freedom not to lord over you. I'm going to use my freedom not to hurt you. I'm going to use my freedom to serve you. The word serve, actually, this is weird, means to be enslaved to. <laughs> All right? So, but it's a joyous kind of slaving, so to speak. It's not a bondage slavery where I, I just have to do it. If I don't do it, I'm going to hell, and this is this, that, and the other. All right? It's something that exudes from you. How? How? Go on to the next verse in verse 13. I, I think it's 13. Is it 13? 16. Yeah, verse 16. Verse 16 through 18. It happens by the empowerment of the Spirit. So how do we do it? It says, so I say, walk by the what? Spirit. Walk by the Spirit and you what? Not you will not gratify the desires of flesh. Because, you know, your flesh is going to rise up and want to do what you want to do. The way that you want to do it in your marriage, in your friendships, in your, in your, on your job. On, it's going to do what you want to do. But will that harm somebody? If you live your life doing what you want to do, somebody's going to get hurt. Are you following me? But if we live our life and we walk what? By the Spirit. Then we will not fulfill that desire. It didn't say you wouldn't have that desire. Amen, somebody. It said you won't fulfill it. And that's where a lot of times we, we think that every time something crosses my mind, well, I'm not supposed to do it. I'm not being me. No, you're not being you when you're not loving because you were actually created. Right? The image of God bearing down on the inside of you is an image of love. So when we're not operating within that, we're actually not really truly being ourselves. But our second nature has tutored us so long, that Ad Adamic nature has tutored us so long that it seems weird when we're doing the things the way the Spirit of God would have us to do it. I said a few weeks ago that you are fully compatible with the Spirit, right? But a lot of times we don't think we are because it's like, no, oh, I just, I ain't there yet, Reverend Preacher, Dr. Uh, Bishop. Right? But anyway, but that's what God has actually called us to. All right, so he says, so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other somebody say conflict conflict with each other and that here's a purpose they're in conflict with each other so that you do not do whatever you want to do anybody ever been in conflict with yourself Absolutely. that's a good thing sometimes somebody the spirit it's probably trying to tell you the best route in this situation. So it says, they're in conflict with each other so that you will not do what you want to do, but you will do what the Spirit of God 
really desires for you to do. And when you really get deep into it, and Pastor Will will expand on this, or Pastor Jay when they're teaching one day, um, this, you really don't want to sin as born again believers. You've been given a new heart. Your flesh still acts up, wants to do what it wants to do. But if you were limited to your flesh, God help us. There's a new spirit regenerated on the inside of you that desires the things of God. How many of you struggle with it? Me? I'm probably the first one. <laughs> you know, but ultimately and deeply, and I'm still looking for it. It's like, don't want to see him. But I'm like, yes, I do, Lord. I do want to do that. I do want to do that. All right, last thing here, and we're going to go. Um, don't settle for the false versions of freedom. Galatians chapter 19. This is the things I'm telling you with the flesh. Uh, Galatians chapter 19, 5. Chapter 5, verse 19. Nobody said there is no Galatians 19. That means y'all, y'all All right. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. Y'all finding yourself in there? Selfish ambitions, dissension, factions, um, and envy, drunkenness, <laughs> orgies and the like and basically you fill in the blank all right all of those things that are fleshy it says i warn you as i did before that those who live like this would not inherit the kingdom of god basically this is saying this is not the life that we were called to live and people will tell you go out and be free just go do what you want to do you find yourself in a bar Jumping on the side of the table or going home with somebody that you don't even know. You're not going to go to hell because of it. But is that the design for your life? Is that what he designed you for? You follow me? You follow me? So those are the areas where he says that that's not what we're designed for. So when we look at our freedom, the, last, the three things. It is God's will. Somebody say it is his will. He died for that. He died. Christ died for freedom purposes. Not just to get us to heaven. Freedom is dependent upon God's grace. Somebody say that. Freedom is dependent upon God's grace. It's dependent upon his grace. Don't ever lose that. All right? When we lose that, we lose the purpose of freedom. And we lose the empowerment of freedom. All right? And then the last thing, our freedom is used to serve one another in love. Does that make sense? Freedom is used to serve one another. In love. I pray that this message would be one that freed you so. uh, to be able to use your freedom properly. That's where you're going to find the happy life that everybody's trying to search for. The happiness that we desire and that we're running for and that we're chasing after. It's when we be who God has called us to be. Doesn't mean you never have issues, it not mean you never have troubles and struggles. But if that's where you're going to find your most fulfillment and the most liberty because where the spirit of the Lord is, is what? Liberty. There's liberty. Father, we give you honor tonight. We bless you. We love you for who you are. We thank you, Father, that your it's your will that we would be free. We thank you for that awesome awesome revelation to us that it's your will that we would be free. We thank you, Father, that not only is it your will, but we also thank you, Father, that it is empowered by your grace that our freedom and our liberty is a direct result of you gracing us, God, with this strength and the direction and with all of it, all of what it is that we need. God, many of us are struggling in our freedom tonight. Many of us are struggling in what it really means to be free and trying to make sense of it and trying to get it all together. But God, we thank you that tonight that our eyes, the eyes of our understanding are open so that we can be enlightened in knowing what the hope of our calling really is in you. This calling to be free, this calling to be liberated, to not be bound by having to try to keep the law and try to measure up and trying to perform. And, and all of those things only hold us hostage, God. But we thank you that you have freed us tonight. We honor you, God, for that. And we thank you, Father, that even though as, as you've empowered us, we thank you that the freedom that you've given us, we will be good stewards over it. And that we will take the freedom that you've given us and we will love on one another. We will serve you and serve one another with the spirit of love and the spirit of connection. 
but with the joy of being together in fellowship with one another. We thank you, Father, for calling us to be free. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be free, to stand to your feet. We thank you, Father, that freedom is ours. And even right now, God, with our hearts lifted to you and those that will, our hands lifted to you, God, we thank you that you would refresh us in our minds concerning freedom. That you would refresh us in our hearts concerning freedom. That you would refresh us, oh God, concerning what it means to really live a free life. It's what we need more than anything is to be free in your presence. To be free in this world and to be free in this life. We thank you, God, that we are no longer held by restraints of trying to keep a law that we could never keep in the first place. And even as a New Testament church, a law that was never even given to us. But we thank you that you have liberated us through your son, Jesus Christ. You have restored unto us the life you called us to in the garden. We magnify your name for it. We glorify your name for it. Bless your name. Just lift your hands real quick, Father. Those with their hands lifted, God, I thank you that you would just continue to indwell them right now with your presence. Overwhelm them with your presence. That they may know that in you they are free. Father, I see smiles coming over their face now, recognizing that it is you, God. No longer having to worry about measuring up. I hear God saying some of you worrying about having to measure up and worrying about whether or not you're going to make the team. I don't know what that means. But whether you're going to make the team and, and some of your identity is even locked in that. But God says, understand that I have accepted you in the beloved and I have liberated you to live a life of freedom. So from this day on, you are free to run. You are free to dance. You are free to live for him. No longer bound by sin, no longer bound by shame, no longer bound by guilt, condemnation, and all of those things. But we decree and we declare the freedom and the glory of the Lord to overthink, overtake our lives and to flood our hearts. And in the moments, I hear, I hear him saying that in those moments where the enemy is coming to you and trying to tell you that you're not measuring up, that you're not exactly where he wants you to be, Remind the enemy that you have already been set free. Hallelujah. Remind the enemy that you have already been liberated. Remind him that he who the Son sets free is truly free indeed. Remind him that you have already been set free and that you have already been given the liberty. Take all of that, even as we go down from this place tonight, as we leave from this place tonight. Take that and intentionally use your freedom to love like you've never loved before. The same love you give, the same hug you give, is the same hug you'll get. The same hug you give will be the same hug you get. When your fleshly desires go to rise up and say, be selfish intentionally say, who can I serve? Who is it that I'll be able to serve? I'm speaking to somebody. Who is it that I'll be able to serve? To eradicate that which the enemy would try to get us to fall into. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's activate that really quick. Just love on somebody in a real kind of way. Whatever that may mean for you, whatever that may mean, just love on them. That's how we're dismissing Right? Amen. Alright, just love on them in a real kind of way. Praise God.